O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine, most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary. As we gather here in this great and beautiful cathedral of Westminster this afternoon in order to worship Almighty God and to honor our Blessed Lady, we do so on the threshold at the very beginning of what will, please God, prove to be a momentous year in the life of the Church and indeed for the whole world. The year of faith proclaimed by our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, together with the Synod of Bishops currently meeting in Rome to discuss new ways to evangelize, that is, to spread the gospel of Christ, have as their focus the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the opening of the Second Vatican Council, called by Pope Blessed John the 23rd, and also the 20th anniversary from 1992 of the publication by Pope Blessed John Paul II of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And also on this day, of course, the 13th of October, we keep the feast of St. Edward the Confessor, the patron of Westminster and patron of this great Archdiocese of Westminster, or one of the patrons. Because we are gathering for a day with Mary, it is important that we take time to reflect upon the crucial role that our Blessed Lady has to play in the life of the Church, especially during this year of faith. In the apostolic letter introducing the year of faith, a letter entitled Porta Fide, the door of faith, one of the points mentioned by the Pope is that during this privileged time, the Church must retrace the history of faith in the light of the call to holiness. The call to holiness which each of us receives at baptism. And likewise, the Church must retrace the history of faith in relation to the reality, a reality we know only too well, the reality of personal sin. It is this second reality, the fact that we are sinners, that acts as a vital force and an essential motive with regard to the work of conversion. In other words, it is precisely in the turning away from sin and the turning towards Jesus Christ that conversion consists. And to do this, Pope Benedict writes, to do this is to focus upon Christ who in the words of the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2, is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. 
the redemptive incarnation of Christ, that is, God's taking human flesh for our salvation. This is the answer to man's plight. The answer to his distancing from God, original sin. The answer to the attraction to wrongdoing, temptation. And the answer to our own personal sin. And having spoken about this reality of what he refers to as the interweaving of holiness and sin, Pope Benedict then turns to Mary, Our Lady, who, he says, by faith accepted the angel's word and believed the message that she was to become the mother of God. Yes, it is by faith that Our Lady welcomes the message of God, the message of God communicated to her through the greeting of Gabriel. And it is by faith that she believed the world-shattering news, the unbelievable news from a human point of view, that she was to become the mother of God. What is faith? Faith is both a gift of God's grace and a human response to that grace. While belief is the result of the gift and the response of faith, together with the use of our God-given human reason, allowing us to make partial but not full sense of the great mystery of God himself. And it is our faith-driven belief in God, belief in God our Father and our desire to love and serve him in his Son, Jesus Christ, held together by the power of the Holy Spirit, it is this which defines the Christian life. And the same is true for our Blessed Lady, who, by the anticipated merits of the passion, death, and resurrection of her Son, was conceived without original sin. At the Annunciation, when she says, Fiat mihi secundum verbum tuum, be it done unto me according to thy word. Mary's freedom by preservation from sin encounters the freely given invitation of God. And at that moment of acceptance, the whole of creation, which has been wounded, not destroyed, by sin, is able, as it were, to breathe again. There is faith, and thus there is both hope and love. This year of faith for the Church will act as an opportunity for her to breathe again the fresh air of the Holy Spirit. Fifty years ago, the Second Vatican Council sought to allow the Church to do precisely this, not in order to conform or to change the Church to the spirit of the world, that spirit we know changes and flickers with each generation. But the Council sought that the Church might be renewed in her mission to change the world, to bring all things together in Christ. And in the same way, the Catechism of the Catholic Church was the gift of Blessed John Paul II to the Church precisely to enable her the better to preach and to communicate that same Catholic faith both to her own members and to those who do not know Christ as yet. Now, while it cannot be denied that some of the interpretations of the teachings of the Second Vatican Council that have been handed down to us haven't always accorded with what the Council Fathers either said or intended, 
And while it is also true that recent years have witnessed many catechetical endeavors, some more successful than others, nevertheless, it cannot be said that we lack the tools with which to do the job. The task, that is, of professing, of witnessing to, and of spreading the faith. And in each of these tasks, professing, witnessing, and spreading the faith, our Blessed Lady stands with us, praying for us, and encouraging us by her faith. Because the year of faith is beginning now in the month of October, Pope Benedict has also drawn our attention to the crucial part that the Holy Rosary can, does, and indeed should play in our Christian lives. Last Sunday, in fact, in his message given after the recitation of the Angelus in St. Peter's Square, he suggested that families and parishes in particular, should take the opportunity to rediscover the prayer of the Rosary during this year of faith. And personally, I can think of no better way in which to mark this special year, together, of course, with our personal prayer, our weekly Mass, or more often if we can make it, and our regular monthly confession. And Pope Benedict tells us that with the Rosary, we allow ourselves to be guided by Mary, the model of faith, in meditating on the mysteries of Christ. And day after day, we are helped to assimilate the Gospel so that it shapes all our lives. The word rosary is derived from the Latin for a garland of roses, and it's a traditional Marian prayer, as we know, that leads us to meditate upon the events of our Lord's life and ministry, and especially upon His passion, His death, and His resurrection. And Pope Benedict invites us to pray the rosary personally in the family, in the parish, learning, he says, at the school of Mary, which leads us to Christ, the living center of our faith. In fact, the Pope himself prays the rosary every evening while taking a walk in the Vatican gardens. So I ask you, and I ask myself, where will you pray the rosary during this year of faith? And, please God, beyond it, at home, in church, at school, on the bus, in the tube. The rosary, in fact, can be prayed anywhere, even without the beads, if necessary. So let us make it an integral part of the year of faith. Finally, we cannot come together in this beautiful cathedral without mentioning and more importantly seeking the intercession of the patron saint of Westminster, St. Edward the Confessor. That wonderful model from the 11th century of a wise and just ruler, the builder or the re-founder of the first Westminster Abbey, and the first Anglo-Saxon, in fact the only English monarch to be canonized. Indeed, in his apostolic letter, the Gate of Faith, Porta Fide, after referring to the faith of Our Lady, the Pope goes on to speak of the faith of the saints. And the faith of St. Edward stands as a wonderful example of perseverance. For in worldly and political terms, his reign was of mixed success. But it is interesting that it was precisely during his reign, in the year 1061, five years in fact, before his death, that our Blessed Lady appeared here in England at Walsingham. The Pope ends his apostolic letter for the year of faith with these words, let us entrust this time of grace to the Mother of God, 
who is proclaimed blessed because she believed. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine, most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary.